Hey there guys, a uh, quick video on this 8210 here. We are in the middle of harvest for 2024, just starting soybeans here and uh, pulling uh, uh, grain wagons with this 8210. We were getting, um, you know, driving down the road, the transmission would just kick into neutral and we would get a beep. And if you pressed the, um, the code number button there, uh, what we were getting was this, um, in the operator's manual here, this PCU-51. Um, and when I did some research on this code, it sounds like what it means is that um, the tractor has lost the ground speed uh, sensor feedback for more than two seconds uh, consecutively. Um, so what we um, kind of have been digging into here, let me show you guys where the sensor is at on the tractor. Now you got to go to back to the back of the machine by the drawbar and um, if you shine a light in here, the ground speed sensor. So let me zoom in so you guys can see where I'm at here. This tractor doesn't have a three point, but if you had a three point, this would be a, probably a more difficult job. But to give you an idea of where this thing is at, it sits right on the top of the differential housing here and you can see there's three wires coming out of it, a red, black, and a gray, and then uh, with a kind of a spacer and a hold down on it. So um, I kind of spent some time working on this before starting the video. We just got the part here today, but what that part looks like when you pull it out on the bench. Um, oh, sorry guys, I think I've got it over here. Here is the old one. So this is what this guy looks like. Um, it sticks down into a bore on the top of the diff case and uh, the end of it here, I think there's a little magnet and it's looking at um, uh, teeth going by on, uh, at the bottom of that bore, there's a gear that it's looking at. So um, when I pulled that, um, when I pulled that sensor out of the bore, if you shine a light in there and then shine a mechanics mirror down the bore, um, I could see the sides of spur gear teeth. So it didn't look like there was a reluctor or anything broken off. Um, and I should mention too, guys, this issue was intermittent. So like it would run okay for an hour and then it would start acting up and kicking it into neutral. At one point it got really bad where it was like um, after you'd recycle back into gear, it would kick back in just after a few feet again. Um, so we pulled this thing into the shop here and um, there are, the harness actually connects in. Um, there's, there are Packard weather pack connections here and um, with a, with maybe a foot long lead and that harness is pretty easy to get to you kind of let me back up again so you can see on the left side your three point stick your hand back here you should see these connections the uh, the hot wire the uh, system voltage supply in the red there is a single packard weather pack and then the ground is the black the ground is the black wire and then the signal output is the gray and um, I checked it ahead of time and um, I used, uh, I just used this laying um, test lead set so I could um, test the sensor remotely outside the tractor. I, can, I connected these three connections, um, red, hot, uh, black ground, and blue, um, blue, green, to the signal wire. And then I re just connected it here off on the side where I could kind of probe it with a multimeter. And I could see that, um, I could see that I was getting system voltage on the red I could see ground on the green and on the signal wire, if I went between signal wire and, and black, um, when I put a metal object in front of the sensor um, tip, like you just put a screwdriver, a screwdriver or a pry bar or something right in front of this tip, I could see that um, gray signal wire um, go from, uh, it, it would switch from 5 volts to about 0.2 volts. So. To me, it looked like the sensor was functioning. Um, it, it looks like I've got power and ground and everything down here. Um, the suspicion is that, um, you know, I, we have an intermittent problem that maybe after the tractor's hot and it's been running for a while, that, that sensor starts to flake out. So what we're gonna try first here is just replacing the sensor. Um, so it's pretty easy, you just, uh, uh, you, well, if you have a three-point, this would be a lot more difficult, but. 
Uh, you pull that bolt out there, you need a 15 millimeter socket or wrench to pull the bolt out. You pull that hole down off and then the sensor's underneath that cap. So you gotta kinda, at first you gotta wiggle it out with a pry bar or a screwdriver. Um, and this is what you're gonna see. So the new part that we got, um, guys, when we looked it up in parts catalog, this is the part number for it. I saw that in parts catalog there was uh, serial number breaks for different years of 8210, 8410, but it seems like now here in 2024 they're all subbing to the same part number. Um, and then it, this, this sensor doesn't come with an O-ring. If you can see there's an O-ring on the sensor shaft here. Um, that O-ring that you need to buy separately, this is the part number for it. So uh, we're going to give this tractor a try here today with the sensor swap. Um, if there's still a problem, I think we're going to have to dig into it deeper. You know, and maybe there's a problem with that gray signal wire. I did do a visual inspection on all the harnesses here. Um, it, those harnesses kind of go back to a breakout on the right side. And I think they enter into this bundle right down here. So we'll have to dig into it further, but we need to get going, harvest today. And we're just going to try this. Um, I think if we do have to probe further, I believe the PCU is behind this panel right here. Um, so we would have to check, you know, power ground and that signal feed there. Um, but we're going to give this a try first. Um, something else I should mention, uh, guys, is, as I was going through this, I read a couple threads on the forum. I wasn't running the tractor. One of the other guys was. But one of the threads I read said that um, if it's the ground speed sensor, when you see the issue happening on the tractor, uh, watch your display and see what your... Um, see what your ground speed is telling you. And if you see it, uh, you know, flash to zero or be flaking out, um, the ground speed sensor is a, a really good indicator that's what the issue is um, and not like a trans charge pressure or something. Um, the other thing, um, we didn't try this yet, but in the book, if you guys have a, a manual yet for your tractor in the tractor, um, there is um, a section in here on page 40-8 talking about using this enabling mode where um, you can still use the tractor um, in case, even if you have a PCU fault active. So um, it talks about um, taking that panel off that I was pointing to earlier with the SMV sign on it and um, unplugging two of the connectors and kind of um, switching which uh, male and female sides they plug into and that will give you um, at least um, seven forward and two reverse. So um, if you guys run into this and you're in a pinch in the field and you need to get some, uh, uh, some grain out and you need the tractor to work, um, this looks like it could be an option. I think if we have trouble with it again today, this is what we might do. But um, uh, I'll, we need to get back in the field here and give this tractor a try. But I wanted to make this video quick, guys, in case um, you've experienced the same issue uh, with your tractor. Hey guys, just in the tractor now, taking it for a quick drive. Um, this is what I was talking about monitoring. Let me pop it into gear here. You guys can see that on the corner post. So far, all looks good. Um, kind of run through the gears and be watching this. Um, we're going to give this a try today. It seems like we're working okay so far. Um, I'll come back to you here in another segment, uh, maybe after we've used this tractor for the rest of the day or maybe after the weekend and we're maybe more confident that this was what it was, uh, just to give you guys more confidence in uh, this video and the fix. So, be back in a sec. Hey guys, I think we're still acting up here. Let me show you what it's doing. I don't think the sensor was the issue after all. Let me pop it into forward here. Let's see if I can we can get it to happen here while you guys are watching. Vary my speed a little bit.
course it's not doing it now. What it was doing, guys, was uh, kind of it would be sitting steady at a certain uh, output and then you would see it drop down to like 0 0.9, 0 0.5 for a second and then it would come back and read normal again. So I think we might have a wiring issue. I'm going to pull this back in the shop and pull those covers off. All right, guys, the plot thickens. Uh, we're digging into this deeper since the sensor replacement didn't work, as I showed you guys in the last segment. Um, so what I found so far is um, when you pull that this plate off the rear of the cab, there's three controllers back here, uh, one that says vehicle, one that says engine, um, and then this one I th must be the hitch control. Um, and what I found is um, so far from those three wires on the sensor, the signal wire, the gray one, goes into this um, vehicle controller number one. So it's the one that's on the upper left. And it has a printing on it of uh, the number on it is 508. And see if I can I believe it's this wire right here. So if you follow it, it goes into the back of this connector here. So it's on the, it's on the back side. And it's this pin here, so it would be the second one over from the top. So it would be this guy right here. So I probed that one with the fluke. So I put a, you know, an alligator clip down there into the weather pack on the gray, and uh, just put uh, into continuity test mode, and was just probing in here and making sure that that connection was good um, all the way across. Sorry, it was this one. Um, I just stuck a back probe pin in there and uh, wiggled the harness all around, and I was getting a really nice steady signal all the time, like no intermittent behavior. Um, so it looked to me like this, uh, the signal wire was okay, and then I moved on to the ground, and that's actually what I'm plugged into now. I'm, I've got an alligator clip on the black wire, and it took me a long time to find where that thing was because there's a lot of black wires in these harnesses that go to the vehicle controller. But what I found actually is um, the that speed sensor harness just has a ring terminal on it. It's not a sealed connector and it sits right here on this lower left leg of the controller kind of pinched between this harness P-clamp. And um, the, I, I was having such a hard time finding it in continuity check mode there on the fluke. Um, I was, you know, probing all these connections, couldn't find it. And I was, I, I poked on this and I was dragging my lead across it and I wasn't getting anything and I just heard one beep from the fluke, and I kind of scratched it. I scratched on it and pushed on it, and I got another beep. And um, it seems like um, when I disconnected it then, I'm getting a solid. Here, let me just show you guys what it, what it sounds like. So continuity check mode. Um, this is my red lead here. So if I disconnect it, I get a really nice, um, well, not pushing hard enough. There you go. A nice solid tone on the fluke. I know I'm getting a good connection there. This wire seems like there's good continuity from the wire down to the connector. But um, when I pulled this bolt out, it was pretty loose. And um, there was all kinds of dirt and uh, lime finds and junk all around it too. So I think maybe my whole issue here is maybe an intermittent ground. I am going to um, clean all this up with a wire brush. Uh, maybe put some star washers in here and tighten it up really tight. And uh, we're going to give this another try. So I'll be back in a sec here, guys. All right, guys, just wanted to show you what, it, what I ended up doing here. Um, so this is what uh, that um, speed sensor ground looked like before, kind of under this P-clamp here. I added, uh, I wire brushed everything and then added uh, two star washers underneath, one where it contacts the case of the controller and also between that and another wire. So I, I made another ground wire here to run down to, I'm assuming this is a sensor ground for something else that's grounded to the case on the engine controller. Just to give a little redundancy for how critical this ground is here, I wanted to give it a secondary point just in case uh, something like this were to happen in the future, hopefully increase reliability a little bit. I did want to mention too, guys, I really like these um, these uh, Molex Permaseal uh, heat shrink connectors with glue. That's what I use here. You can kind of see the glue squeezing out. That's just such a nice watertight connection. 
made in USA, not some crappy Chinese connector that's going to give you trouble a year later. I've been really happy with those since I found those guys. Um, also, I should mention, um, if you guys do pull apart any of these connectors while you're in the process of troubleshooting, um, it's always a good idea, especially if you're in a dirty environment like I am here, um, to, uh, you know, use some sort of electronic cleaner and, you know, spray all the pins and sockets out really good and dry it off before you put them back together. Um, you don't want to introduce a new problem while you were troubleshooting because you got dirt in there. So that's what I ended up doing here, guys. I think this was the issue based on kind of what this c connection looked like and um, based on sort of how loose that was and the intermittent signal I was getting. So now that I got everything back together here, guys, I just wanted to show you I got my fluke here again. And um, when I, you know, touch this, when I touch this uh, bracket here, I poke underneath and try to get on the ground. I feel like I'm getting a pretty decent, really consistent ground. No, I really had to was I really had to scratch before, and I almost missed the point that that was supposed to be the the ground. I just got one little beep earlier. So I, I think this is probably what it was. We are gonna give this a try though and verify the fix next. Hey there guys. Well, I w was hoping to be able to show you a video of the tractor uh, running around working, but uh, the guys came and grabbed it because they needed it yesterday and I never got a chance to kind of follow up showing what the display looked like. But um, it did end up uh, looking similar to that one video I showed you guys in the beginning where it wasn't acting up. Um, we've used it all weekend now and um, the guys told me that um, the tractor has actually never shifted that good. So it seems like we've maybe had an issue here for a while um, where we were getting in, uh, intermittent continuity on that ground and messing up that sensor signal. That signal must do something to also affect the shift quality um, or the, it must imp influence the shift logic somehow based on what the guys told me. Um, so. I think we found it there, guys. I can't say with 100% confidence whether it was the sensor replacement or the ground. Um, I have a feeling, um, you know, based on just checking the sensor out of the tractor, that the sensor itself was okay and it was the ground, but uh, I don't know for sure. Um, I did forget to mention two things, guys, in that earlier part when I was working on the tractor just because I was in a hurry there, but um, you might want to um, grease that differential housing bore there's a pretty sharp edge where that sensor plugs in just to make sure you don't cut that o-ring um, so i like to use this lucas um, this lucas green for kind of just general purpose stuff like that um, so i kind of stuck my finger in there and kind of wiped it around inside the bore and um, uh, also wiped it on the o-ring after i installed it i don't know what you guys do for when you just want to apply a light coating but I like to use these. Um, I like to use these acid brushes, you know, like you would use for, uh, like, flux for um, like copper plumbing. And um, I like to use these view tainers um, to just kind of put the brush in when I'm not using it. Um, only got one hand here, so I'm just gonna set it here for now. But um, also, guys, uh, maybe just in summary too. Um, make sure you check the connections first. So like if I had to repeat this job over again and we weren't in such a hurry here, I probably would have approached it more methodically by looking at the wiring to start with. Um, you know, if you find something like what I did here with the ground, that sensor cost around 150 bucks. So you'll save yourself some money if it is just a, a wiring issue. Um, and also guys, I noticed on, uh, online there that there was all kinds of junk um, Chinese knockoff versions of that sensor online for like 50 bucks. Um, don't even mess around with that crap. You know, just spend the money, get a, a get a made in USA sensor from the dealer. Um, when you need to get up and running in the field, you don't have time to screw around with this Chinese crap that's going to break in, in a couple months, if it works at all. Um, the other thing, guys, is um, the, the continuity check mode, just if you're not familiar with this. So I, I run, I've got a lot of multimeters, but kind of my one of my go-to is my Fluke 179. So um, it has a, 
an ohm check on it like you could also do for checking wires but it also has this like continuity check beep mode so if you just take your two um, you know your positive and negative leads here and clip them onto each other you know you'll kind of hear that beep and it'll give you a live reading of your ohms uh, your resistance reading there and um, this is kind of nice for um, I think I forgot to mention when I was doing the wiring troubleshooting guys was that um, like when I had this down there on the gray signal wire from the tractor and then I was probing around up top to kind of make sure I had continuity um, on that that gray uh, signal wire that was going up to the controller um, another good thing to check is while while you're in this continuous check mode after you've got the two connections on and you're, you're audibly listening to this uh, you know shake all the wires under there too you know grab the harness underneath shake it uh, move it around push it um, it could be sometimes these issues are kind of vibration related uh, like if you've had um, um, a, a wire that's worn through from contact or you've had mice in there chewing on stuff um, sometimes it doesn't expose itself till the tractors bouncing around in the field and um, the the continuity check mode is kind of a nice way to um, find some of those intermittent things that can drive you nuts so um, so yeah, guys, the, the tr there's, there's no tractor in here right now. It's in use. Uh, sorry I wasn't able to kind of show you guys the uh, um, the final fix there, but I think we're running good. Um, we've been getting good feedback from the guys, and if you um, run into this same problem, guys, I hope, hope this video helps you out, and um, have a good day, everyone.